So now we've got to spend a little time talking about a couple of unique things that happen when you uh, have multiple chiral centers. And so the structure below here is going to have two different carbons that both are bonded to four different things, so two different chiral centers. So it turns out when that happens, here you might have as many as four stereoisomers that are possible. So here N stands for the number of stereocenters, and a chiral center is the most common example of a stereocenter, the only type we've talked about in this chapter so far. Uh, and so in this case, we're actually going to hit that maximum, and we're going to draw all four of those. So we'll draw one here. So and if we show stereochemistry now, we can show an actual specific example of that stereoisomer. So here, if I put the chlorine and the bromine both in wedged positions, that's one of the four possible stereoisomers. So, and I'm going to invert both of those chiral centers here if I put the chlorine on the dash and the bromine on the dash. And you can recognize that they're inverted here because uh, it's not just changing the chlorine from wedge to dash. I'm actually having the chlorine and the hydrogen that's not drawn in trading places. Notice this chlorine's on the wedge, there's also a hydrogen on the dash. Over here, now that hydrogen is on the wedge. And when you have two groups trade places on a chiral center, if you recall, that turns R into S and S into R. I've got two more stereoisomers to draw here. So, and in this case, maybe I'll put the chlorine as the wedge and I'll put the bromine as the dash. So, and then over here, I'll put the chlorine as the wedge and the bromine as the dash. And these are the four stereoisomers that are possible. So here we're again hitting that maximum of four possible stereoisomers. So we can now compare any two of these as well and either use the relationship enantiomers or diastereomers. All four of these are stereoisomers of each other and a comparison of any two of them therefore either leads to a relationship of enantiomers or a relationship of diastereomers. And that's the next thing is, these are relationships between two compounds, enantiomers and diastereomers, always. If I say, is this compound on the left an enantiomer? Well, I gotta say, of what? Could I say, does he have an enantiomer? And the question, the answer would be yes. But if I say, is he the enantiomer? I've gotta describe of what? Well, is he the enantiomer of the compound on the right? And the answer, it turns out, is yes. These are enantiomers. So they both have two chiral centers and I've inverted both of them. So and when you invert all the chiral centers in a molecule, you get the enantiomer, assuming that the molecule is chiral to begin with. Same thing for these bottom two here. So they both have two chiral centers, and I've inverted the configurations for both chiral centers. So these are enantiomers as well. But it turns out any other comparison of two compounds I make, they're going to be diastereomers. So if we look at these two, they have one chiral center in the same configuration, one of them in an opposite configuration. This is the hallmark of diastereomers. So, and again, you can have cis and trans isomers. Those are technically diastereomers, but we're not going to encounter those here now. In this case, with multiple chiral centers, if you've got at least one in the same configuration and at least one in a, the opposite configuration, they're going to be diastereomers. Uh, and in this case, the key is without inverting every chiral center, these will not be mirror images. And your definition, again, of diastereomer is non-superimposable or non-identical, non-mirror images, though. They're not mirror images. So in this case, again, with one configuration the same, one different, they're not mirror images, but they're still stereoisomers, so they're just diastereomers, not enantiomers. Same thing with this comparison. These are diastereomers. Same thing with both of the diagonal comparisons. These are diastereomers, one chiral center of the same, one different. Same thing with this diagonal comparison, one chiral center of the same configuration, one in the opposite configuration, those are diastereomers. Cool. This is kind of how it works. Let's look at a little bit of a tricky example on the next slide. So if we look at this compound here, at least this structure, we're going to see one thing that's going to make it unique from the last example, and, and that's one, depending on the stereochemistry, this thing might have what's called an internal mirror plane of symmetry. So in this plane of symmetry, uh, is unique. It turns out that any compound that has one will end up being a chiral. So if we look at, say, cyclohexane. So, and I look at the perfect mirror image of cyclohexane here. So its perfect mirror image is exactly the same compound. So, and that's, again, the definition of a chiral. So cyclohexane is a chiral and it and its mirror image are identical. Well, it turns out somebody took this a step further and said, if you can find in the middle of a molecule what's called an internal mirror plane, any molecule with one of these will end up being a chiral. It's just a little trick. Notice it's not the definition of a chiral, so it's just a trick for identifying a chiral compound. So we looked earlier and said, if you want to find a compound that's chiral, easiest way is to find chiral centers. Now we're finding that if you want to find a compound that's achiral, not only might you look for the absence of chiral centers, but you might look for one of these internal mirror planes. And you only got to find one. Cyclohexane's got a lot of them. I only showed one 
It's got a lot of them and through the bonds as well. There's quite a few. You only got to find one, one internal mirror plane and that compound for sure is a chiral. It'll be identical to its corresponding mirror image. So with this example above here, so we want to draw all the stereoisomers for this guy possible. So, and I can do wedge and wedge, kind of like what we did in the last example. So, or I could do dash dash. So, or I could do one wedge and one dash. And do the opposite here, dash and then wedge. So here's all four possible ways I might envision doing it. And we're going to find out we're going to overcount. These four are not all independent. It turns out that these two right here are identical. They're perfectly superimposable. They have the same compound. And so I don't actually want to include that. There's only going to be three in this case. We're not going to hit that maximum possible number of stereoisomers of four uh, having two chiral centers in this example. So we're only going to get three rather than four. So if you take a look at this compound on the upper left here, he has what's called an internal mirror plane again right there. The reflection of a wedge is a wedge, and therefore this compound is a chiral. So this guy over here that we crossed out really is his mirror image. So, but being a chiral, it and its mirror image are identical, not different. You can kind of envision, if you just take one of these molecules and rotate it out of the plane and flip it around, you'd get exactly the other one. So, and that's why we're not gonna draw this fourth one as an independent structure. It's just redrawing the first one flipped over. So, but for this two on the bottom here, they do not have an internal mirror plane. You might think, oh, Chad, you can draw the same line, but the reflection of a wedge is not a dash. So in this case, these really are chiral. They're not a chiral. They don't have that internal mirror plane. So, and the relationship between each other, since I'm inverting both chiral centers, is that these are going to be enantiomers. Cool. So the top one here, which is achiral, doesn't have an enantiomer, only chiral compounds have enantiomers. But these bottom ones, which again are chiral, not having an internal mirror plane, they're enantiomers of each other. Now again, we could also look at the two other comparisons here. I could compare these two, and they've got one chiral center in the same configuration, one in the opposite configuration, so they're diastereomers. And I could look at these two, and again, they've got one in the opposite configuration, one in the same configuration, so they're diastereomers. So, and we come up with a new special name here that we'll introduce on the next slide. And that word is meso. So a meso compound is achiral, but has chiral centers. So, and the idea here is that any compound that has, again, one of these internal mirror planes is achiral. But that's only the first part of that definition. The second part is really important here, and it has to have chiral centers. In this case, this molecule's got two chiral centers. So, and having two chiral centers, but being a chiral, that's what makes it meso. So every meso compound is a chiral, but not all a chiral compounds are meso. So in being a chiral, this is its mirror image right here. It slipped around. So, but for an a chiral compound, it's identical to its mirror image. So we wouldn't actually again have four of these. We crossed this one out. There'd only be three stereoisomers here. Now for these lower two here, they don't have that internal mirror plane. And these are both chiral. And their relationship to each other would be as enantiomers here. So whereas the relationship between these two or these two would be one as diastereomers. They'd have one chiral center of the same, one in the opposite configuration. So one other thing to note here, and let's draw this one more time. So this is a meso compound again, and again, being meso, it is a chiral. So, and being a chiral, it is also not optically active or optically inactive, we say. And so in this case, it's a little bit of a tricky thing because we have two chiral centers and chiral centers rotate plane polarized light. But as a whole, this molecule does not rotate plane polarized light. So, and the key is it's got two identical chiral centers, at least the same four substituents bonded to it, except one's R and one's S. And so they rotate light in opposite directions and on average, light doesn't get rotated at all. So if we kind of look here, so he's number one, he's number two, he's number three, go around the circle, hydrogen's in the back, so that guy is R. So I'd go to the other one here, he's number one, he's number two, he's number three, 
go around now left-handed turn counterclockwise hydrants in the back and so he's s and so again one's r one's s and that can be a, a trick used in identifying miso compounds sometimes is when you know you have that symmetry but maybe they don't present it in quite the rotational confirmation that's convenient for seeing that symmetry uh, you might just assign r and s and if you got those two identical chiral centers and one r, one's r one's s that's the miso version if they were both r or both s that's not going to be miso so now that we've taught you about these miso compounds, I uh, want to get good at identifying them. And so here I've given you eight examples, and I want you to label them as either chiral, achiral, and miso, or achiral but not miso. Again, recall that all miso compounds are achiral, but not all achiral compounds are miso compounds. So if we look at these first two here, I can see that this one on the right has the internal mirror, mirror plane, and that's going to make him a chiral, whereas this one on the left not having it, so and having two chiral centers, this guy's just plain old chiral. So, but this one here again, we got to verify that second part of the definition here. So he is a chiral having that internal layer plane. He also has two chiral centers. Both these carbons have four different groups, and so he's a chiral and meso. So there's his designation. So if we go to the next two here, for the next two, I can see that the one on the left here definitely has this mirror plane. And a lot of students mistakenly call this one achiral and meso. So, but it turns out he's also got this mirror plane right here. And this one's got the same mirror plane. So as long as the wedge and the dash fall on the mirror, they don't get reflected at all. And so both these have that internal mirror plane and that makes them both achiral right off the bat. So, but now we got to look for those chiral centers and you'll find out that there are no chiral centers in either one of these molecules. It's a tricky example here. So, but whether I go around to this direction or this direction, these CH2s are identical. And if they don't look identical, you go further down the chain to this carbon and they're exactly identical. So no four different groups on any carbons uh, throughout this structure, either one of these structures actually. So they're achiral, but not meso. So let's classify that. that's what I wanted to just say. So achiral, but not Miso. Cool, let's move away down the chain. And so this next example here, I can see again this internal mirror plane, and that's going to make this achiral. So, and this carbon right here has four different groups, and this one right here has four different groups. So those are chiral centers. So, and if you're achiral but have chiral centers, that makes you achiral and miso. So if we look at this next one here, this one might be a little bit difficult to identify. So, and if we rotate around this bond here, so, and I'll rotate it around to put that methyl group in that position. So if there's a mirror plane, I'll be able to see it. So, but that'll put this methyl group 180 degrees around. It'll also put this guy 180 degrees around and 180 degrees around from a wedge pointing down is a dash pointing up. So, and you can see here, there's no mirror plane. So between the wedge and the dash here, the reflection of a wedge is a wedge, the reflection of a dash is a dash. That, there's no mirror plane here. And so this is just going to be chiral. So it's not achiral, it's not meso, it's plain old chiral. All right, moving on to the last two here. So for the last two here, I see I've got two chiral centers, and it's not in a rotational confirmation that might make it easy to see the symmetry, but you might realize off the bat there's no way there's a plane of symmetry right between uh, these two chiral carbons, because here I've got two carbons on the left, I've got three on the right. This is not even a symmetrical molecule. There's no chance for symmetry. So having chiral centers and no chance for symmetry, this is simply chiral. And finally, we'll move to this last example here. So in here, we've got a chiral center right there and a chiral center right there. Both have four different groups. So a methyl and ethyl in this big like sec butyl group, uh, and then a hydrogen. So having chiral centers here, the question is, is there a chance for symmetry right down the plane here? It's not in a rotational confirmation that makes it easy to see here, but again, being a single bond, not part of a ring, it's free to rotate and might get into a rotational confirmation where I could see that internal mirror plane. Uh, and in this case, it might be difficult to see and might be even difficult to rotate in your head or even to rotate it on paper and stuff like that. So the other approach you might take is just to assign R and S. Now, first thing we realize is there is a chance this might be a symmetrical molecule, might have that internal mirror plane. And so, First requirement is that, and then if I see if both chiral centers are R, then it's chiral. If they're both S, it's chiral. But if one's R and one's S, that's the meso compound. So as we kind of learned before, and so if we take a look here, so for this chiral center right here, so his number one priority group is gonna be this guy, number two here, and number three, the methyl. And if we go around the horn, that's a right-handed turn, and there's a hydrogen in the back, that'd be number four. And so right-handed turn means R. So, and if we go to the other chiral center right here, so here's his number one, his number two, 
his number three. So that also looks like a right-hand turn, but here the hydrogen would be on the wedge, and so it looks like R, but it's really S. And we see that one's R and one's S, that's the meso version. And if you're meso, you're definitely achiral, so this one's achiral and meso. So a few different ways to kind of look at assigning uh, chirality here in achiral and meso and things of this sort. I uh, just want you to be well-versed in all of them. Likely chance you're going to be tested upon it on your next exam.